man who's been in the WWE for 14 years, the first African-born WWE champion in history from the greatest tag team in the history of WWE. Ladies and gentlemen, Patriots fan, which kind of sucks, Kofi oh, Kingston. Oh, oh, sir, you can't just throw that in there like that. Well, I, Why would you say that? Well, you don't a, lie to all these people? You have on. an international uh, audience? You're just going to sit there and lie? Well, there was a build-up, a lot of build-up. You heard yeah. me, compliment, yeah, compliment, yeah, yeah. compliment, compliment. Now let's point out the flaw. This yeah. guy likes the Patriots, the flaw. just like that guy right there. <laughs> it's like know, you guys don't like greatness when people say that. You know what I mean? Like Thank You can't you. achieve greatness yourself unless you can appreciate greatness. You got to appreciate the dynasty that is the Patriots. You yeah. understand that? It's and only and only when you appreciate it can you then have similar success. I'm not going to say you're going to have the same level of success. No. Yeah. Similar success. Yeah. You know? Hell Come yeah. on, man. No, shut Woo. up. Don't you. do me like that, Pat. No, not you, Kofi. You, you keep like talking. That, no, I, I appreciate yeah. you, Kofi, but you need to shut <laughs> he up. He makes a lot of good points. I'm I just, just think saying. they need to be emphasized. You know? Yeah, I mean. Come on, man. I haven't won a playoff game in three years. Same on playoff wins as the Colts the last oh. three years. Oh. Right. Oh. Just oh. Like, Robert Kraft actually told me that. I mean, the body of work. If you want to, you know, talk about the Colts and the Patriots. I don't want to start anything. You want to talk yeah. about the body of work. You talk about the Colts. You talk about the Patriots. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, the, the, the Patriots are the standard, by the I way. Mean, greatest <laughs> dynasty in the history. Greatest dynasty in the history of sports. Not sure it'll ever happen again, actually. No, it's special. Very special. Uh, did you play football growing up? What did you do? I did. Up? I, I played football in high school. Um, I played D back and a little bit of running back, but my hands are very small. I couldn't catch. Oh. You see, you see, I couldn't catch out there, but yeah. I could swap the passes down. Athlete. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was out there, and uh, I actually wrestled too in high school. Okay, yeah, I heard yeah. you wrestled. By the way, yeah. I believe yeah. Connor yeah. from similar. Yeah. Go Sachems. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sachems, baby. Yeah. yeah. Same high school. Woo. You know. Same team you like in the NFL. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, same Why hatred from every other fan base. What? Yeah, that's what, what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, we just it, went back to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a thing. You, know, uh, you expect it, though. Professional wrestling. Yes. Was that always the dream? Was it always something you wanted to get into? Because I yeah. talked to everybody that's in the WWE right now, especially the black dudes. Yeah. Kofi, you are a guy that everybody oh, looks boy. up to. Obviously, like Booker T, and there's greats that have come before you. Yeah. But it, with this generation, you are the guy that everybody's looked up to. Even the guys yeah. in the New Day, I've talked to them. Big E, Xavier Woods, they're like, well, actually, we looked up to Kofi, and then now getting <laughs> to work with him was a big deal. So did you always want to do it? Did you know you were going to be a wrestler? Yeah, it's crazy because I feel like everybody has a moment where they realize, like, oh, Oh, I saw this match and then I knew I wanted to be a wrestler or this happened I met this guy for me I feel like I've always been a fan I can't remember a specific moment yeah. I used to watch Saturday morning superstars you know what I mean and just like it was a part of my routine every Saturday like religiously that's what I watched when Raw came out initially and wrestling wasn't cool you know I was one of the only people that liked it but then Stone Cold and The Rock and the Attitude Era right. come around Hell and yeah. then everyone's giving each other like Stone Cold stutters in the hallway and I'm like wait a minute this you, you guys this wasn't cool to you, you yesterday yeah. you want to jump on the bat you didn't even ask me you know what I'm saying <laughs> this is my thing but um, yeah, I feel like I've always been a fan, man, and uh, I've just been attracted to the, the the glitz and the glamour and the fireworks, and particularly like you know, for example, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was one of my guys, and he uh, had like the martial arts, the high flying, you know, and I, you know, the bright colors. He came with the Komodo dragon, breathing out fire. Like, how could you not be attracted to this? You know what I mean? How could you not be drawn to this? So, yeah, man, just the spectacle of it all really drew me in, and I've always been a fan. Ever well, since. and I think the WWE is very thankful that you've been. A fan forever because your athleticism the way you go your energy the mic work like new day is a groundbreaking trailblazing group that's going to be talked about 50 100 years from now yeah it's been a lot of fun and it's funny that you say that because like we don't really think about like so far down the line because we're still in it right we're still trying to make great moments we're still trying to be great and um but when you look at like our body of work and the things that we've done we've done so many just special things why do you guys so work you think why do you I think th you guys it's work? It's just the chemistry, man. It's the chemistry. Uh, it, it's a very real brotherhood. Like I'm even, I'm gonna get, it, I'm getting like emotional even like thinking about how much love I have for for Woods and E. And we talk about it probably at least like a couple of times a month. We just will sit there and just start gushing, uh, just how much we appreciate each other on text. You know, uh, it's a very real bond, man. I feel like 
If you are lucky enough to meet one person that you connect with, that you bond with, that you identify with, it, you, you're, you're lucky, right? Like it's a, it's a, you know, just it's very unique. You're not supposed to meet people that you get this close to. And I met two in the same industry. We have the same vibes. We travel together. I think we've been a group since, officially since what, 2016, I think we debuted. We've never had any kind of like argument, any kind of fights or, you know, disagreements. We're always supporting one another and we just want the best best for each other so it's just a real bond when we're out there like we're trying to pop ourselves man we're trying to just have fun <laughs> and make each other laugh and make each other break man. out there and everybody gets to watch it and uh and, and enjoy it so. yeah some of the stuff you guys do, yeah yeah you know like in the commercial break <laughs> we go straight to pat we start messing with them taking pictures and you know i think i was uh i got know, kofi twerking that's what i was about to say <laughs> you know me like i'll shake my hips i i'm a yeah. i'm a i'm a twerker yeah you know? two I'm minutes a, straight twerker, this guy right you know? in front of me look at me and then you want to make he's eye screaming contact. yeah look at me and then biggie look at him yeah. And I'm like yeah. sitting there, like, all you know right. I mean? Don't look away. Don't they look hit away. hit me with a pancake in New Orleans. Yeah. You guys are coming out, hit me square in the face. Pinpoint accuracy. Yeah. You got to keep your head on a swivel out there. A lot of people, like, you know, they'll be sitting there, like, texting. I don't know who you're, who you're talking to, but you need to be focusing on what I'm doing in there. Because yeah. if I you're learned. not, you might catch that pancake right in the cheek. You know? Got my you just ass. might catch a pancake in How the cheek. How many years do you guys throw those pancakes for? I think it, what, maybe like three, four years or something? Straight. Like that? Every show. They're coming out with pancakes. Yeah. There had to be a thousand of them made. Oh, yeah. And you guys were throwing pancakes. Slanging at me. them, bro. And that, Slanging them. That was also with the bootios, I believe. Yeah, bootios. We tried to get ice cream. Um, that didn't become a real thing. But, you know, it, we, we do what we can out there. The fact that we even had pancakes out there. Like, I think we had a, uh, it was a lumberjack match with me and E versus, I think, Kevin Owens and Sammy Zayn. Woods was on the outside. It was all the lumberjacks, all the wrestlers outside, making sure that when we got thrown out of the ring, they throw us back in. But Woods they is, beat you up, too. You know, yeah, yeah, they, they, they give you a little something and then throw you back in get your ass back in there you know but woods is on our team so he's like not just a lumberjack he's the chief jack you know Ooh. he's the chief jack so he's got to stand out oh. so lumberjacks of course they wear their uh, their flannel right Dang. so woods had i don't know where, like where you find flannel in a towel you know what i mean like a flannel vest he just went out found one got a well, flannel water. vest cut the sleeves water, off yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> he's wearing that he's wearing his like lumberjack hat and of course, lumberjacks have pancakes. So now he's out there with the pancakes. And the only thing the people cared about in that entire match was the plate of pancakes that Woods was sporting. We're out there taking bumps, getting hurt, <laughs> getting thrown out, getting beat up, and everyone's talking about, we want pancakes. I'm like, God, <laughs> you gonna cheer for me or what, you know? Uh -huh. So pancakes were born the next week. We just went to Vince and we were like, hey, can we bring these out again? It's like, do you wanna bring them out? Is that what you wanna do? <laughs> So yeah, yeah, we think the people might the people might like it. All right, go on, take them, go on, go on, go on. And there, and pancakes were born, you know. So we and just then like, were slinging those. Then like pancakes, six bro. months later, you go and you're like, hey, I think we're done with the pancakes. No, they oh, love God, the pancakes. God, 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 I God, gotta have the pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> so you know Woods plays trombone and for a while like uh, it was me Ian Woods uh, we would have like six man tag team matches and we have three people on our team so like the logical thing would be like the three of us were a team we'd be out there but there was a period of about like six months to a year where we would have another random wrestler on our team because Vince was like no oh, what was I just I gotta have that trombone <laughs> God, I, got, I gotta have that trombone out there we're like alright so for like two years Woods is out there they're just <laughs> and that's what they wanted you know so yeah it's all good uh in the history of wrestling normally yeah. the people that uh bring good times good vibes funny everything like that not champions right there's like different roles for everybody so you have had to kind of balance it i mean you came in with a jamaican accent <laughs> what you talking about gold school coffee kingston uh, <laughs> you're talking about throwback coffee kingston hey, rude boy. you're talking about the bitch you're talking about jamaica uh, hey, 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 hey boom 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 oh whoa throwback excuse me sorry sorry didn't mean to go back right there didn't mean to take it back on you no but that was an incredible that was how we, i think we we're obviously we we're all introduced to you and then you know a couple weeks later you come back you're a completely different character yeah. but the entire evolution of you you've always been upbeat high energy funny and you even had a championship run in the middle there which is not normal at all yeah. is that something you have to think about because you know the business a lot better than a lot of people Man. like what are dreams and aspirations while you're making all these decisions yeah i think the most important thing to having an extensive career is being 
being able to adapt. For example, you look at The Rock. He started off as Rocky Maivia with all the, uh, you know, traditional like tassels and animal print and curly hair. He becomes The Rock. Triple A started out as Terror Rising, oh. right? You know, and then becomes the game. The Triple A Stone Cold Steve Austin. Remember bro. when he was speaking French? Yeah, 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 coming out. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, but but he he applied like aspects of that to you know pompous Triple H, and then he you know becomes this badass character that comes out with a sledgehammer and skull. So it's an evolution. I mean, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Ringmaster, right? Like oh. so, there's an evolution of, of characters. You know, you always have to find a way to adapt and, and move forward. So with me, um, it, that's really kind of what it's all about, right? Like I started off as Jamaican when I first got signed and I was doing the Jamaican accent. Um, all the agents at my trial were like, well, we've never seen that before. So you had um, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Steve Kern, um, uh, Tim Horner from uh, Midnight Express, um, uh, Simon Dean, you know, Mike Bucci, they were all there and they were all talking about Dean Malenko, Arn Anderson, talking about something they had, they had never seen before. So I'm like, oh my God, like how hard is it to impress these guys, yeah. you know? So that was what got me in the door. And then over time, you just have to figure out a way to keep on building on what you have, right? So, you know, now I, I, I twerk and throw pancakes. Hey, <laughs> I don't know if that's an evolution or like a de-evolution, hey, I don't know. Twerking is a pretty we're, large we're part moving. of the Caribbean community. I think I've been down there, I've seen some gyrations happen, but you are black, you have dreads, yeah, yeah. but you are not Jamaican, you are yeah. actually from Ghana. Yes. And whenever you became champion, the trip back to Ghana, I remember seeing it all over social media, and I think as a wrestling fan, we immediately mm. go like, all right, is this bullshit or not? And I yeah. just asked you, like I think the first time I actually asked you was right here beforehand. Yeah. Shoot, born in Ghana. Yeah. Go, haven't been back there since like, not, you went back in 96. Yeah. Then you win the championship, you go back, and it was legit everything we saw. Like, hey, our, our hero has returned. That had to be so fucking amazing Bro, for you. I can't even, like, as amazing as it looked on film and all the clips, it was like 20 fold in person. I'm even getting like goosebumps and yeah, you should. Like the, the way cool. that I'm feeling about it, right? Um, so my mom has wanted me to go back to Ghana for a real long time. Um, like you said, the last time I had been there was in 1996 when I went for a summer. Um, but then- Family's still there? Family's still there, yeah. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins. You know, we keep uh, great, keep in great touch through through Facebook. It's a beautiful thing, social media, you know? Well, I so, mean, face, it is beautiful for that. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> be careful. There's a bigger conversation. There's a bigger conversation coming. We do not have enough time. Here. Whatever but, the case, it is beautiful. Yeah. Keep up with family through Facebook. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, when I went back, so so finally, you become like a, a WWE superstar. You don't have time to do anything. You don't have time to go to weddings and you know even funerals you miss and just a lot of different life events. Um, but after I won the championship, I was like, man, hey, maybe I can bring the title back to Ghana maybe we can bring the film crew and do it. And I talked to like uh, Stephanie McMahon and she was all about it. And you know, it, it just happened and it was four days there. And from the moment that I got off the plane, I was surrounded. It was almost like when uh, like Ali was in South Africa, yeah. right? And you saw like everybody in the like the town and the village like surrounding him. That's the how it was, here. bro. The entire time, like walking through the airport. You know, I don't even know if I went through customs or not. They just wanted to get me out there. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, like, oh, here you go. And and I get out there, and there's a whole bust, and everybody is there. They brought like dancers, and people are just celebrating in the streets, and it's just so um, amazing to me. Uh, we went to my my parents hometown so even like driving the uh the 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 van through the the dirt roads people are banging on the sides of it you know man, I get out, the Beatles Bruh, it was like Kofi yeah, Kingston dude, is back. it's crazy man like that so and then security too we had to have like 10 cops they all surrounded me in a circle and they're all holding hands and we're just in the middle of it and everyone is just so excited wanting to like you know touch my arm or just like just the, the 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 level of happiness on their face was like it's just crazy because is that it, pinnacle it's it's yeah that's what you're I, looking yeah, for that's, right in that's this it man like a genuine like you know just authentic emotion like it, it's it's just it's at the end of the day like to me it's so crazy because i'm just a dude that it decided to follow his dream you know that's it anybody could potentially be in this position and the fact that uh. i am the Oh, I mean, uh, in, in theory, in theory, in I theory, think with, yeah. with work hard work, ethic, like, you know passion, what I mean. Like a lot of, there's got to be a lot of luck involved. Talent, there's a lot of luck for me. Luck, yes. But um, yeah, to to have that kind of an impact on people's lives, and then to go to like 
the schools. We did like a whole little tour. I went to a school and there were kids who were, you know, three, four, five, six years old. And I get to show them the most prestigious title, the WWE title. And on the nameplate is one of the most popular Ghanaian names ever on it. And I'm like, this, this is possible. So to me, like if that inspires you to believe that you can do whatever it is that you want to do that is like it's so exciting for me to, to think about that to, to have an impact on someone's life where you motivate them and push them in the direction of their dreams because sometimes that's all you need is man is, is, is a little push you know someone to believe in you Hope someone to get you to like believe in yourself right so yeah man it, it was just incredible on so many levels hey man that's yeah. awesome yeah. job well done in that whole thing because you're inspiring people and we yeah. talked to rainy about this yesterday you know wwe whenever you're the king of the cast you're gonna take a lot of heat yeah for a lot of the, every decision that is made especially in this business yeah. the, the fans are so passionate so loyal especially yours i mean there yeah. is very very passionate fans of the new day that every single decision every single thing that gets decided for you guys to do or every outcome that happens there is this automatic negative drawback almost about it on Instagram, on, on Twitter, on in the dirt sheets. Do you pay attention to any of that or do you have to stay about 14 yeah. years into this? I mean, you have to pay attention to it I, a little I, bit, right? I see it. I see it. But the thing about it is that um, I feel like we have a general, like a, a an intrinsic drive to fit in. Even when you're a kid and you're in like middle school, you want so desperately to fit in to the point where you might compromise your own morals or beliefs just to fit in with this group so you can be accepted. So when it comes to social media, there's so many people that like in an effort to fit into this like toxic group, yes. you want to go in there and make like yeah, comments, you want to right, yeah. run people down so you can get likes on your comments so that people can. So it, it's it's very toxic in a lot of ways. But for me, like I hold myself to the highest standards. So nothing that anybody says can make me feel like worse than I feel, you know what I mean? Or, or any better because I just hold myself to a high standard. So I don't really allow any of that to really affect me. Uh, I certainly do appreciate the positivity that's out there. And again, like just having an influence on people's lives to to push them in a, in a positive direction. But um, yeah, I mean, I see it. I think a lot of it is, is real comical in a lot of, you know, because like, bro, like you're at the house and you're gonna take time out of your day to pull out your phone. I'm gonna type this in and see if he reads and he's gonna know what I said. Like, who cares, man? Like, do, <laughs> yo, do something else, bro. Like, come on, man. You gotta have something better to do than that. You mentioned Stephanie McMahon. You talking yeah. to her about going back to Ghana, and obviously, uh, her Triple H, Shawn Michaels unveiled a new Undertaker statue yesterday at Access, and it was an emotional moment. But the longer I'm here, the more I realize, like, this is this WWE is a family, like yeah. very much a family. Yeah. How do you feel now? And I talked. To about this with like Big E and Xavier Woods and then there's going to be a lot of younger guys that are going to uh, continue to come in that look up to you like you're an OG now around here yeah. and that's a real thing like I'm going to ask you for advice on my match probably at some point in the next couple yeah. of days and I assume that happens to you on a very regular basis you enjoy that you love that it feels like that you're the perfect person yeah for sure man I, I think that uh, I've been real lucky to have experienced <clears throat> so much success and so many positive uh, moments in this industry and that's what this is supposed to be, man. Like, this is a dream. There's nothing else that is like this. So whatever I can do to um, to help people get to that point and taste how the 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 the, the sweet nectars of the industry and, and you know what I mean? Like, feel it the way it's supposed to be felt. Of course, I'm going to be right there to, like, to help you or give you advice. And it's just an opinion, too. Like, I don't get mad if, like, people don't listen to what I have to say because it's really, like, what you feel, man. Like, do what you feel. Do what's in your heart. This, this might be what I would do in that situation. It might work. It might not. I don't know. But if I can help anybody to... Uh, you know, to, to, to attain a little bit of success and have a feel good moment in this industry that I'm, I'm all about it. So it's cool to be in that role where um, it's like I look around and I'm like, man, there's a lot of people here who I don't really, uh, I don't really, people be telling stories. Be like, and this guy was there and that. I'm like, I have no idea who you're talking about. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like me, Dolph Ziggler, Miz, uh, I don't know who else, Seamus has been around. Um, Randy, right? You know, the the longer you hang around this business, the uh, 
smaller the crowd. Yeah, the, the smaller the smaller your circle of familiarity, I guess, gets. But it's it's part of it. It's what are some though. mistakes you think you see a lot of the young folks make in this business? What do you think it is? Is it in ring? Is it out of ring? Is it just whole um, process? I, I think a lot of people, and I did this too, but I, I feel like people take themselves very seriously, and you forget to have fun. To me, that's the biggest mistake. And I'm real lucky that I had uh, Scott Armstrong as a ref for the majority of my uh hey, my he's early had some matches. blown calls though let's not he's get crazy a, <laughs> hey, he's, he's a quick hey. tapper every once in a while that guy Bullshit. hey, hey you, gotta I, do, you gotta do what you gotta do he's right? lucky you i wasn't know? on commentary he's, for that I, I call out the refs every hey look at the damn oh, yeah i enjoy it you know but he, he was a guy where like Initially, I would come out and I'd be so nervous and you'd be thinking about like what's supposed to happen in the match. Okay, I need to be here. And you come out and you, you know, slap hands with the people, but you're not actually like there. You're not feeling it. You're not taking that moment. And then you get in the ring and you're waiting for your opponent to come out. And Scott will be like, hey, boy, hey, man, take take the, take this all in, man. Take a moment. Breathe. Look at all these people here, man. They're here for you. And you take a look around. It's like, wow. This is actually really, really cool. Well, so why is that guy telling me to go fuck like, with yeah. him? <laughs> why doesn't he like me? He doesn't even know me, but it's still pretty cool. He's talking to me out there, you know? So I think being a lot present, of people, it feels like. yeah, being present and especially like early in your career because you don't, there's nothing, the more you, uh, it, it never really gets like, like old, I guess. It's always exciting when you get in there and you're out in front of the crowd, but it's never quite like it was when you first come in. You'll never have that, you know, those initial butterflies and that just feeling of wanting to go out there and kill it more than anything. Like this is your opportunity. I think people get nervous in that moment, but I would hope that you would take that nervousness and like, you know, let it make it into something positive, you know, and, and let it let it drive you to have a best match, a, a good match or have the best match on the card. So, um, yeah, I think I think being present was, would be a, a lot quicker way to no, no, it's a great description. Me, I, I'm long winded now. You no, know, what I'm you should be. So, you're a great talker. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you're a great talker. I mean, I've I've been given the chance to do one promo, and the music got hit in the middle of my thing. So I'm a long winded person. Yeah, as well. hey, <laughs> yeah, I think know? came in the middle of that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. You said you're chasing that. In I think as a fan of wrestling, we've seen like the older guys come back and like chase that feeling again, chase that feeling again. Yeah. Have you thought about because you're 14 years into this, you can go for another tech decade plus if ah, you if you want. Yeah. Have you thought about all that, or are you just trying to yeah. be the moment it's yeah man i just kind of try to t like i said before like i'm still kind of in it but if i was to tell you that i've never thought about like when to end it you know that would be a lie i, I don't know i still feel pretty good i think that when you show up to work and this goes for like any job but if you show up to work and you're not having fun and you're miserable and you're complaining and the environment is weighing on you and you're taking that negative yes. emotion home then from a mental health perspective like you should probably get out but for me right now I'm having fun out there. Anytime I'm out there with Woods and E, like it is just, we're on cloud nine, man. We're having so much fun out there. And then just to be able to interact with the people and especially like you look into our audience and you see such a diverse crowd. You see all the kids out there and um, to put a smile on a kid's face is a pretty cool thing. I think that one of the, one of the things that I say this a lot, but that one of the things I miss the most is when we got to be bad guys and I came out and I could yell at kids, oh. I could berate kids, <laughs> yeah. I could threaten to ground kids, I could tell you to respect me because I'm an adult, you know, don't make me come out there and do what your parents should have, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I miss that so much. But just to be able to like make people react and, and feel a certain way is the best part about our business. Yeah, it's fantastic watching yeah. you work. The commercial breaks you guys are on the yeah. entire time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, and that's like one thing I've realized about like the separation of you know who it seems like oh these people whenever it goes like when they're out there this is a show the entire time yeah even if the lights are off even if there's something going on somewhere else like you xavier and biggie even if you are in the background of a shot it's like hey the new day is going to be an additive to this particular scene because they're only getting however many opportunities like the viewing the way you guys view your opportunities i think is very very inspiring yeah man yeah, yeah. now follow up mm -hmm. That Big E shit was crazy. That was Whoa. right in front of me, dude. So I, I almost that was I almost got like I yeah. got like sick almost. So it, the crazy thing about it is that like what was supposed to happen um, was I was in there. Um, he was supposed to have that interaction on the outside. I came over to like check on him, and then we ended up going into the end of the match. So I was in the ring. 
I've still not seen the actual video and the impact. And I'm I have not, not rewatched it either. I'm not going to watch it. Me neither. You know I saw it saying? live. Like, I, yeah. it, it's, it's crazy that you had you, you probably had the closest view out of anybody in the entire arena. Yeah. So I could tell like it kind of like I from where the ring was like they went up and it looked a little bit wonky and he came down. I was like, ah, OK, I think it might be OK. But now I go over there to like actually shoot check on him. And I'm like, OK, he. Shoot, by the way, means real. Shoot, real. That's yeah, the yeah, inside, yeah. insider speak. Yeah. Shoot, yeah. check on him for real. So I went to go look, and I'm like, okay, he looks like he might be okay. And then we end up going to the rest of the match. And it wasn't until um, like the match was over and the ref came over and said, I don't know if he's okay. I was like, so then all of a sudden, like, it becomes there's a level of just like tension and nervousness and you don't know what's going on. And I went out there and he still had moved from the spot that, um, Oh yeah. Yeah. He landed that he, in. That he, that he was in, yeah. you know? Uh, and then, uh, the paramedics are out there and he's getting put on the stretcher and you just don't know like what is going to be. So, um, it was incredibly scary. Uh, cause like I said, man, I look at E and Woods, we text and talk every single day. These guys are my brothers. And the thought of like losing one of them, like it just makes me sick to even think about that. Like a piece of me would, would be gone. So, um, but on a positive note, hey, um, hey it, it's- Best it's, outcome that could have been Bro, happened. if you could choose a way to, to break your neck, this is the way that you would choose. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what I mean? So, in like, that city too, by the way, in, with those doctors in Birmingham. In Birmingham like yes. this is where we send everybody to get rehabilitated, to get surgeries. Like um, there was, Ivar actually broke his neck a few months back. The doctor that operated on him was actually in the crowd, like chasing wow. the ambulance. You know, uh, Dr. Dugas, who works with all of us on our surgeries, he was there and out there on the floor. So he was he was in really, really good hands. And then after the um, uh, the the X-ray, uh, he found out that there was no um, there was no misalignment. There was no spinal cord damage. It was just a fracture only in, a his, broken. C, in his C, C1 and C6. You know, and his and his um, you know, uh, vertebrae. So hey, we're happy bro. you're gonna be all right. Yeah. It could have been. It could have been. We could be having a very different conversation right now. He he posted something too about like uh, the doctor and he's looking at his X-ray. The doctor said, if you would have broken your neck this way, you would have been paralyzed. If you would have broke it an inch this way, you would have had a stroke. If you broke it this way, you would have died. So when you when you think about the gravity of that situation and how like. If somebody is like one step forward, one step back, or like, you know, it, we could be having a very different conversation. But again, like on a positive note, he, you see him on his Instagram, he's out there rocking his new fits and everything with his neck brace on, <laughs> and he's just gotta wait for it to heal. So we just take it one day at a time and hope for the best. And uh, he's gonna be, I mean, he's already back on his feet already, but he's gonna be, uh, he's gonna be just fine. Well, that's great. Yeah. Hey, Big E, we miss you, pal. Yeah, bro. Yeah. We yeah. miss you, pal. That was scary, man. I got sick. Wow. Literally, it was right in front wow. of me. And I think the narrative by some people, and you talked about the toxic people and people trying to you know, jump in the mob mentality and feel accepted, like, yeah, I'm against this as well. Mm -hmm. Everybody that was on my headset, in my ears, everybody that was around me, all the people, everybody, you know, we got live TV though. Mm -hmm. Everybody had no idea, like it felt like everybody was like, oh man, Big E's one of our guys, like this yeah. is, it was a sad scene, yeah. happy Big E's okay. And it's yeah. because, by the way, it's because he's an absolute Bro, tank. All, every shrug, every rep, yeah. up until this point, <laughs> was all into this, man, if his neck wasn't so thick, you know? It's crazy. Happy all, he's the, all those muscles. Happy he's going to be okay. But that's real. Like It's very, yeah. very dangerous out there. What you guys yeah. do on a very regular basis, what I'm going to attempt to do on Sunday, like there is real life danger happening oh, yeah. every single moment out there. Yeah. And from all of us to you, man, thank you for your years of dedication and sacrifice for your body for our entertainment. Come on, Connor bro. went to your high school. He has a question for you. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, Kofi, yeah. I'd ask you, you know, who's yeah. going to win the Super Bowl, but for oh. shoot, we know it's the New England for Patriots. Shoot. Right, shoot. Shoot. You, you shoot. Shut up. Well, yeah. For shoot, we for shoot Pat. Yeah, we already for know shoot. that. We already know that. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Pat mentioned, like, you know, the guys coming in who might be new looking to you. Was there anyone you kind of looked to, to for, for your career and also yeah. So for like New Day as a whole? Yeah. So for myself, um, all my, everyone always asks like who your favorite wrestler is. And for me, my three guys are Rey Mysterio because he was undersized. I was undersized. I was always told I was never going to make it because I wasn't big enough. And then I'd look on TV and see Rey winning championships and just being awesome. Um, so it's Rey, uh, Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat, like I mentioned for the reasons earlier, and then Shawn Michaels. Like 
come on, man. Like, Sean is the greatest of all time. He's never had a bad match. Most of his matches were not good, but great. So those are the guys I looked up to. And the crazy part is, is that, like, uh, as time goes by, people transition from in the ring to, like, these producer roles. And um, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was one of the, like, head producers. Like, and he would, like, produce my matches. And we'd be, it, there'd be so many times where, like, he'd be giving me suggestions and whatnot. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, whoa. Oh, that's the dragon. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear what he said. You know, so I got so it, uh, every day, man. I think about um, just how, like, if I were to have a conversation with eight-year-old me and be like, "Oh, you like these guys you watching on TV? You like this wrestling? One day you're gonna be talking with Undertaker and trading stories about your kids. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it, it's just wild to think about that. How crazy life is. Hey, how come everybody's so nice too? I, I was told everybody's <laughs> supposed to be an asshole. So that's what I was told. This, I was told yeah. everybody in WWE is bad people. Yeah, don't yeah. trust anybody yeah they'll burn you everybody's mean i have not got that sense at all and and now granted i do feel and this is self-awareness i get treated differently by a lot of people because of how lucky i am to have this particular job what i've been able to do in the past and everything like that but i feel like i have seen nothing but respect from basically everybody to everybody in this yeah man i think a, a lot of it is that like again and i've said it like three or four times now but there's nothing quite like this industry and i think we're all grateful that we have this opportunity for as long as it lasts so um you think about so so when I graduated college, I worked for the Staples Corporation. I worked in a cubicle. Um, oh, do, the yeah, worst. bro, my <laughs> God! I, so I was told it was going to be like an advertising job, but it was like we were proofreading these big buyers guys that went out, and I had to make sure that everything was spelled right or the period didn't that there wasn't a space between the last word and the ah. period, and the chairs all had to face the inside. Ah, and, and the kicker is that like we put so much into it, man. And the kicker is like I know when I got one of those buyers guides in the mail. Straight in the track. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm working hard. I'm getting yelled at that my, my pages aren't looking right. And I know I'm like, well, it doesn't really matter. Like, this is going in the trash anyway. Like, why are you getting... So, man, I, I think, like, uh, a, a bad day in WWE beats the best day at Staples, you know? And again, yeah. I have no offense to anybody no, at no, Staples. No. Some people love it. Some, some people, people love the con- They love the consistency. And, you know, you know what your job is going to be. And I... And, great people but for me like being in that cubicle and like ugh, like the, the the gray walls and my imac sitting right there and i'm just like bro this can't be life this can't be the rest of my life you know so luckily i uh i followed my dream and and here we are but i think all of us have that like you you realize how special it is that, it, that what we what we do is so, it's a business though i mean it's yeah. a fine balance it's an interesting yeah, interesting balance yeah. especially when you've been around for 14 years yeah bro. man Crushing yeah it. it's oh I, yeah I, I'm, I'm out here trying to do my thing Pat. You hey know, nick yeah, go ahead, pal. Thanks, uh yeah. kofi it's fascinating to me randy orton sat there yesterday and he talked to us and you guys have completely different backgrounds right yeah. you it was kind of your dream to be a superstar randy although a third generation guy said it wasn't like his first choice really he didn't really yeah. love it like that um you guys, you have this super positive attitude. He was self-described as uh, a dick, yeah. a, a judgmental <laughs> dick is what he calls him. Uh, so I'm just curious, like you come from these different backgrounds, you get into the WWE, and then he mentioned how he had a moment where a light bulb went off. Mm-hmm. Where we figured out, like, okay, I'm gonna appreciate this, I'm gonna learn how to work, and I'm gonna take care of everybody. I was wondering if you had a similar moment where like a light bulb went off where it was like, okay, this is how, this is how it's done. I see how it's done from the mm-hmm. older guys, and I'm going to pass this along. My, my light bulb moment was, again, like, I always wanted to do this. And I always say, like, so when you're a kid, right, like, people tell you you can be whatever it is that you want to be. But then when you get to be an adult, you start getting to, like, college, and everyone's like, okay, well, you got to focus. You got to get through. Yeah, you got to get to your corporate too, yeah. job. It's you got to be able to climb that corporate ladder. And when you tell someone you want to do something that's outside of the box, a lot of people don't support you because it's so atypical. It's like, you can't be a wrestler. Well, you're not big enough. You're not, you don't look like these guys. Your, your legs are real, so you got real chicken legs, bro. You, you got all sternum, you don't have any chest muscles. You know what I'm saying? You can't be a wrestler, you know? So for me, like um, my light bulb moment was when I did actually pull the trigger and decide to start training. Um, like the first day that I walked into the chaotic training center, the same, actually, uh, same foundation as where Triple H went. Now, you know, I'm a name dropper. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kill, uh, Kowalski? Killer, Killer Kowalski's old school. <laughs> okay. oh, you know, no big deal. Saying, one of the last uh, students in that generation, myself, Tommaso Ciampa, Ivar, you know, no, no big deal. Hey. You know? But when I walked into that, that school, I just, the feeling of this is where I belong. I'm going to do whatever I have to do 
to make it here, you know? So it was a lot of just sacrifice and a lot of hard work, a lot of long days. I worked those nine hour days at Staples, drive an hour to practice, practice for two or three hours, drive back to my apartment in Boston, you know, re- wash, hell. rinse and repeat, you know? Sore as hell. But I, but, but I knew that it was like, I was working towards what I loved and what I wanted to do, so I didn't care, right? Like. If it was a cold day outside, having to drive to, to Staples, I would be pissed off. You know what I'm saying? But if I was like sore and I couldn't walk and move, I'd be like, yeah, can't wait to go to practice. Bro. I can't wait to go to practice. I can't move, but I love it. So that was kind of my light bulb moment is that um, like I just realized that I really wanted to like achieve my childhood dream. And then there was like a realistic chance that I could do it, you know? So... That's awesome. Yeah. Then yeah, you yeah. start throwing pancakes at people. And now oh, we yeah. throw pancakes and we twerk, and here we are. <laughs> yeah. Impacting the lives of millions. Hey, of tomorrow America. night, yeah. obviously SmackDown tonight, I don't know uh, what's going on there, but tomorrow night, you and Xavier Woods, welcome back. Yeah! yeah. Here we go. The king has returned. Surprise, surprise, mother soccer. The king is back. Yeah, you see what I said there? I don't want to get fined. You guys cuss a lot on this show, but if I cuss, I'm going to get fined. No, I like, no, no. I like my eat. money. I like my money. No, I, no. I got money, but I don't like to waste money. You Ooh. know what I'm saying? I don't want to get fined. So, mother soca. Just when they try to replay that. Did you cuss on the past Matt McAfee show? Uh, no, I said soca. That is not a cuss. Yeah, I just want to emphasize that. Hey, I appreciate yeah. it. I might use it tonight. I'm like, look at these mother suckers. <laughs> mother sucker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tomorrow night, back. though, you and uh, King Woods yeah. take on Seamus and Ridge Holland yeah. with Butch. Butch. Whoa. Hey, listen. Look he be out. lurking, hey, bro. That son of a bitch, Butch. I yeah. know that guy. Now, <laughs> I don't know him as long as uh, Seamus and Ridge Holland have known him. They've yeah. been roaming the streets over yeah. there. They've been yeah, calling yeah. each other different names than everybody else forever. They're they're long, long yeah. friends, obviously. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I don't even know Butch had that nickname because that's how quickly we kind yeah. of interact with each other. Right. They're a problem, though, Gov. Yeah, they are a problem. Do you, do you feel like short change that like, Butch never told you about that nickname when you guys were all hanging out? So you thought you were like close friends, but if you were really close, he would have told you, hey, this is my nickname by the way so you were like yes well, friends, the deal? but you weren't like yeah in the fold that's as soon bold. as i got to that smackdown and yeah. they were like uh all right ridge seamus and butch are coming out i'm like oh can't wait to see who the hell yeah. butch is yeah and then uh butch came out i'm like <laughs> hold on man that guy I, never told me his nickname was butch. that guy you know butch is a great name. i paid that guy a lot of money to yeah. be on my team at yeah. nxt <laughs> give you his real name yeah. and, he, and he would always say to me pete probably that's what he always would say and then i guess his childhood name was butch like, but yeah. whatever the case he's yeah. a problem the butch they, is a problem they, he Butch is a problem, man. But um, I think all of those guys, man, Seamus, Ridge, and Butch, like they fit together really, really well, man. Yes. Like it's a great little faction. Um, the chemistry is there. Like Seamus, obviously, he's been They've around. They've been friends since kids. Yeah, you know, the childhood, childhood friends. Of you know course, what I'm saying? They've yeah. been hanging out, and 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 their chemistry is there. You know, so uh, I think they got something special for sure. Um, they've been giving me problems over the past few weeks, but like you said, man, the king is back, and now me and Woods get to take on Seamus and Ridge, and we got to keep our head on a swivel out there just like the pancakes right keep your head oh, on a yeah. swivel keep your head you alert. gotta watch out for pancakes you gotta watch out for butch you know what I'm saying so <laughs> those are the two things you gotta watch out for hey, but it's butch gonna be great is a man. son of a bitch no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> son he, of a butch uh, mean yeah. he is, he's mean <laughs> He's a butcher with those joints. Cool. Hey, he's going to try to rip those little fingers off your hands. Yes. Good luck trying. You know what I'm saying? My hands used to be a lot longer, and someone tried to rip them off before. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And now they're, they're smaller. So I've had my fingers. What can you do to me that hasn't been done already? That's what we're you saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Butch. Uh, it's going to be great, though, man. I'm excited for those guys. And you know what I mean? Like, your first WrestleMania, man, like... Wow, you can. There, there will never be another first. So for me to be involved with these guys um, and and be a part of their like first WrestleMania experience is pretty special to me from a performer's aspect. You know, like I said, man, I want everybody who's in this industry to be able to feel what this business is supposed to be. You know, like the great feeling of being in front of a crowd of people that come from all over the world. You know, to 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 feel this unique feeling and that energy so um i can't wait to be uh, be able to do that for those guys we're very thankful you stopped by you're the yeah, absolute man. best have an incredible stupendous stupendous wrestlemania weekend you're the absolute best bub thank you man ladies you and gentlemen on, man. Uh, from ghana former jamaican kofi hey. Casey. Yeah.